Hey everybody, it's just past the first of the month and for me that means it's time to do some repricing on our stale inventory. I don't like that we have stale inventory, but I do like it if I can help it to move along a little faster. So what we do is after the first of the month, we go in and pull a, an age inventory age report. We isolate everything that's at least 90 days old and then we go into our repricer, be cool, and we cut the mins on all of those items by 10% and we cut the maxes by 25%. We do this every month. So if it's been here for four months, it's on its second cut. If it's been there for five months, it's on its third cut. So we progressively bring the mins and maxes down in an effort to get the stale stuff to move before it hits a year. If it hits a year, then we look, take a close look at it and generally we'll pull it for liquidation. But our preference is to liquidate on Amazon because we make a lot more that way. So this is what I do monthly. I started you out on our website because I wanted to look at our fun picture instead of looking at Amazon while I talked. But I come over here to Reports, Fulfillment, Inventory Age, and I request a download. I already did that, and when it was ready, it took about 30 seconds, I hit the download button. So I have the, that report ready for you. And then I went to Be Cool, that's our repricer, and I clicked on Upload File. And from there, I pulled the full template. That's a list of all of our current mins, maxes, SKUs, etc. So I have those two spreadsheets open already. Here is listings. And here is the report, the age report from Amazon. And I'm going to combine those by dragging. i got to get it where we can see it and work on it. I'm going to drag that tab over to the other one and that just automatically closes the one and combines them. Now for my own ease of recognition, I'm going to rename this tab age so I know what I'm looking at here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do on this inventory age report and this is going to move quickly so feel free to pause it and you know take it in, absorb it a little bit. I'm going to right click and insert a new column here and then I want to add up anything that has inventory over 90 days so not the 0 to 90 but the 90 and up and up and up so in my new column I'm gonna write a formula an easy formula don't panic equals the sum of these four columns enter and then I'm gonna double click to carry that all the way down. So this column now is everything that's over 90 days. That's what this column is. The next thing we need to do here, we can either sort or filter. Um, I kind of don't have a preference. Let's say we sort it today. We want to sort by that column called old and we want to do it from largest to smallest. And then we want to get rid of everything that does not have a quantity here. So where are you? There's a whole lot of SKUs here. I'm ashamed. You can laugh a little. Okay, so everything from here down has nothing. A lot of those are old SKUs. Oh no, these are all our live ones. Okay. So this is all our stuff that only has current, that has new inventory that I'm deleting. The ones that we're going to look at, these only have, these all have aged inventory of some form. These have inventory 90 days or more. So then we're going to come over here to our Be Cool. And we'll call this column Old. We're going to use a fancy formula called VLOOKUP. I did another video on this, so if you don't get it, go over to my other video, look up and look, watch how to do a VLOOKUP. It's going to look complicated, but after you've done it a few times, you'll realize that it's not as hard as it looks. A VLOOKUP is going to find, it's going to check each of these lines in Be Cool, and it's going to see if that line exists on the other form, on the other page. So it's going to tell us if this SKU has anything over 90 days. Does this SKU have anything over 90 days? it's going to go down and and identify them all for us. So we're going to tell it to check by SKU. We highlight that column. We do a comma. 
we come over here and tell it which part of the of the sheet to look at. We want it to look from skew all the way over to old. That's the relevant portion here. Comma. Now we got to tell it how far to go from skew to the important information, which is that. We got to count, counting the first and the last. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's going to be thirteen steps over, counting the beginning and end. And we want what's called an exact match, so we type in false. Enter. And A means it's not found. This SKU doesn't have any aged inventory. That's good. So you can see which ones do and which ones don't, right? Okay, so now we want to either sort or filter. This time I'm going to show you how to do the filter because I really like this little trick. We're going to tell it to show us everything but the not found. So what we have here is a list of all of our SKUs that have aged inventory. These are the ones that we want to fix. But we've got all those hidden columns in the filter. Now what we have to do to make this really usable is make a new tab. We'll call it Be Cool because this is the one that we're going to upload. Come back to Listings, highlight it. This is super fancy, guys. And I'm going to make this bigger because I can't see the option I need. Home. Way over here, you're going to see something that says Find and Select. And under that, you choose Go to Special. And it brings up this option box. We want visible cells only. That's going to let us copy and paste not the, fil not the data that's hidden by the filter, but only the stuff that's showing. So now I can Control C. I can bring it over to my Be Cool tab and Control V. Now I don't have a lot of hidden data. I just have what you see is what you get. That's what I have right here. If we had tried to copy and paste before, it would have either copied everything or made an error. Both are bad, right? We don't want those. So let's delete this column, which we no longer need. It's already served its purpose. And be cool, we'll get confused if we leave unnecessary columns in there. What we want to do now that we know which SKUs have aged inventory is change our mins and maxes. We'll insert some new columns to work on. We'll take our min from there and we'll put it over here instead. This is going to be our new min price. Another formula equals that old min price times, asterisk means times, 0.9. Okay, we double click and it will copy all the way down. Now we're going to make our new max price. This one equals that times 0.75. We bring our maxes down more than our mins because very often the reason an item isn't selling is not because the prices drop below our min, but because we're just priced too high. Because our max was too high, we followed somebody else up to a crazy high price. And even though we're the cheapest, people just aren't pushing the buy button because we're priced too high. So we bring our maxes down more than we bring our mins down. Okay, we have to do a couple of things with these two columns now. First, we have to right click, format cells, number, and we want two digits, two decimal places. That will, that will give it the format that Be Cool needs to make it look like money, dollars and cents, right? The other thing we have to do, I call stabilizing the data. If you click on one of these cells and, and you look up in the box, which you can't see at the moment, let me bring it down here. There you go. Now you see that. If you click on a cell and look up here, you don't see $19.49. What's really there is a formula. These don't actually have the, the numbers. These have formulas. So we have to stabilize this data by right-clicking and copy, and then right-click again and paste values. We don't want to just paste the formulas again. We want to paste values. Now if you click on these, you can see that they actually have the numbers in there. See up here, every time I click on them, they're not formulas, they're numbers. And now that we've done that, we can delete the old min and max columns. If we had done that sooner, the formulas would have errored out and we wouldn't have the, the prices there. Okay, so we need to save our changes.
and I think we're ready. There's one little problem. I can never remember if Be Cool wants a TXT file or a CSV. They gave it to me as a TXT, so I'm going to assume that's what they want. Let's try it and see. Choose File. Here it is. Let's see if it works. Upload. Yes. Okay. They wanted the TXT. Makes sense. Some, I don't know why I think it's CSV, because if they give me a TXT, they want a TXT back. Fair enough, right? It shouldn't be confusing. It's only confusing to me. You won't make that mistake over and over and over again like I did. All right, so we just uploaded our newly reduced prices on our stale inventory. We didn't change anything except price, min and max prices on our old stuff. It'll take a few minutes in pending status, and if we click refresh, we'll see how many worked. Now I did skip one little step because it's another complication and it's not totally necessary. But because we're bringing the maxes down further than the mins, there's a chance that some of these maxes ended up less than the mins. In that case, they're going to error out. Um, your, min, your max has to be more than your min, so it won't make changes to those SKUs. Um, what you can do, and I didn't want to confuse you with this information too early, but you can add a little formula, a little piece to this formula. So let's come back here and let's say that our min price, our max price has to be at least 10% greater than our min price. So I'm going to say it equals the greater of that or this times 1.1. So now it has to be at least 10% more than the min price. It's going to choose the higher number of those two. So if we get a lot of errors, we will go back and use this as our max price instead. I have to stabilize that data again, copy it, paste the values, and delete this extra one, which would just confuse, be cool, save it. All right, so that's going to be my backup plan. That's actually how I normally would have done it. I just didn't want to confuse you because I know this is a lot of info to take in if you haven't done it in the past. All right, um, we're not going to hang around to see how many error out, but you can see what the results look like sometimes, right? There's 887 on that previous one. 762 were activated, 125 errors. I don't know what that was from, but it was probably from something like what I'm doing today. Hope you can follow along. Let me know if you have questions. Take your time trying to do this the first time, but once you get used to it, it is really just a, like a four minute process once a month. And this is how we maintain our stale inventory.